Hey, Suya. Yeah? As believers in the Lord, what do we most look forward to? Gaining everlasting life in the kingdom of heaven. How do we gain everlasting life? You really don't know that? Huh? The Bible says, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God stays on him. That's certainly right. Uh. But how do you understand these words? The Son means the Lord Jesus. Uh-huh. By believing in the Lord Jesus, we gain everlasting life, and those who don't believe won't gain it. Well, my aunt has a very different understanding of it all. Oh? She says we can't gain eternal life simply by believing in the Lord Jesus. Please, the entire religious world, pastors and believers, all think we gain eternal life by believing in the Lord. Right. But your aunt doesn't think we gain eternal life that way? That's right. Does your aunt believe in the Lord? She has for five years. Ah! That's nothing. She just lacks faith. You should fellowship with her so she'll understand. Of course I tried. Oh. After patiently persuading her, fellowshipping, providing guidance, and explaining everything to her. Oh, wow. Look at how hard she tried. I was completely convinced by her. You were completely... Huh? But do you mean to tell me your aunt was fellowshipping to you? So? What did she say to you? How did she make you doubt that believing in the Lord gains you everlasting life? It's not doubt. Oh, it's a better, clearer understanding of the idea. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on here? You're making me very confused. All right, let's do a scene reenactment. Fine. I'll be your aunt, and I promise. Huh? Whose aunt are you? Oh, oops. <laughs> I'll play my own aunt. I'll turn your confusion into understanding and completely convince you. There's no way. Let's try and see. All right, then. Oh? I want to hear what your aunt had to say anyways. Then let's go to my aunt's house. Sure. Give me a beat. What do you need a beat for? My aunt was singing along to music. Oh. How are we going to reenact the scene without music? <laughs> All right. In the last days, Christ appeared. Speaking and working among mankind Using his words to Judge and cleanse us Leading us onto the right path of Auntie, life what's making you so happy? Oh, hi, Ling! Hi! It's good you came! Oh? I've got some really good news! What good news? The Lord Jesus has finally returned! He has returned? He is the incarnate Almighty God Huh? Who has expressed the truth Wait. and... You accepted Almighty God? That's right. Almighty God has expressed the truth and begun the work of judgment, beginning with God's house. And only by accepting His work in the last days can we finally gain everlasting life. No way, that's not right. What do you mean? The Bible says, He that believes uh, on the Son has everlasting life. If we believe in the Lord Jesus, we already have everlasting life. How can you say that it only happens if we accept Almighty God? He that believes on the Son has everlasting yeah. life. But what does the Son refer to here? Of course it means the Lord Jesus. That's only half right. Half right? What do you mean? Belief in the yeah. Son means believing in the Son of Man sent by God. Yes. Which means believing in the incarnate Christ. Exactly. The Lord Jesus is Christ. Yes, but the Lord Jesus already ascended to heaven. Yeah? What you believe in is actually the ascended Lord Jesus. Right. The Lord Jesus prophesied that in the last days he would come incarnate as the Son of Man. Huh? So have you received that Son yet? Uh, you don't believe in the Son of Man in the last days, which means you only believe in half of the Son, which isn't really believing in the Son. Just a minute. Huh? You say the Lord will return incarnate. Yeah. But there's no biblical basis. There is. Really? <clears throat> She's looking. It was said in Luke 1240, Be you therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. And there's more. <clears throat> Luke 17, 24 to 25. For as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. So, let me ask you. What? Doesn't it sound like these prophecies say the Lord will return as the Son of Man? Yes. Then isn't the Son of Man someone born of man, someone with normal humanity? Right. And doesn't that mean the incarnate God? Right. If it was God's Spirit, could we call Him the Son of Man? Jehovah God is a Spirit, and we don't call Him the Son of Man. So that means, when the Lord returns, it will be in the flesh? You got it! You know. 
Your aunt's fellowship raises a good point. Belief in the Son of Man doesn't just mean belief in the Lord yeah. Jesus. It also means belief in the Son of Man in the last days, which means Almighty God. Oh. If you don't accept Almighty God and only believe in the Lord Jesus, then you've stopped believing in the Son of Man halfway. Oh. It's all for nothing since you have given up. Hoping to gain everlasting life like that is like hoping to stand on the roof and pluck a star right out of the sky. It's hopeless. Your aunt's fellowship has really opened my eyes. Good. But there's a problem. Huh? I still find part of it very confusing. Okay, she's still confused. Liang, huh? what are you confused about? Please tell me. She's still performing. Auntie. Yes? The Lord Jesus said, Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That proves that the Lord Jesus is the way of eternal life. Believing in him gains us everlasting life. How could you say we have to accept the incarnate Son of Man in the last days to gain everlasting life? The Lord said, But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This is the truth. That's right. This is because the Lord Jesus is the incarnate God. Yeah. And he has God's identity and essence. Right. The Lord's words are testimony that he is God's appearance, that he is everlasting life. Right. And only he can give people everlasting life. And that's all there is to it. Yes, the Lord Jesus promised those who believe in him everlasting right. life. But uh, in the age of grace, the Lord Jesus did not give man the way of eternal life. What? Wait a minute. Huh? You're contradicting yourself. What do you mean? Your aunt said the Lord Jesus yeah. is everlasting life. Mm -hmm. So doesn't that mean what he expressed was the way of eternal life? Oh. And she says the Lord didn't give man the way of eternal life. Then let me ask huh. you. What work did the Lord Jesus do? He was nailed to the cross to redeem mankind. And what truth did the Lord Jesus express? The Lord Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He also asked that we love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, mm. and we love others as ourselves. Mm. He taught us to be humble, patient, tolerant, and to forgive others 70 times 7, and so on. Hey, she knows it well. Of course. These truths expressed by the Lord Jesus all had to do with the work of redemption. Right. They taught people not to sin and to confess their sins and repent. Right. So what he expressed was the way of repentance, which allows people's sins to be forgiven. That's right. Isn't the way of repentance the way of eternal life? They're different, very, 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 very... What's wrong with you? Huh? Did you short circuit? That's ridiculous. I'm just trying to emphasize my point. <laughs> then please tell me how they're different. The way of eternal yeah. life is the truth that allows people to live forever. That's true. That means it allows people to escape the bondage of their sinful natures, gain the truth as life, become compatible with God, achieve absolute obedience, never again sin, resist, or betray God. Only the path that can accomplish all these things is the way of eternal life. She's right. The only reason people die is because they sin. If they could resolve the problem of sin, people wouldn't die? Right, right, right. Ugh. After we believe in the Lord, our sins are forgiven. We enjoy the Lord's bountiful grace. Yeah. We practice the Lord's words, and outwardly, we can do some good deeds. Yes. But you can't deny that we still often resist God. Don't you think that's a fact? You don't even need to tell me. Huh? Of course. It's true. And we continue to sin so much, 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 Again? much, much. Again? Just making my point. <sighs> Keep going. Listen up. Okay. We believe in the Lord, but for our own interests. We still lie, deceive, and want fame, and fortune, and crave wealth. Right, right, right. We believe in God to gain blessings, and when trials come, we just blame God. We sin, confess, and don't repent. We don't practice the Lord's words. Our our good deeds mean nothing. They're actually... Actually? Actually. What? Hypocrisy. Huh. For status, we try to win others over. We form cliques and exclude other opinions. Our dispositions are arrogant, self-important, selfish, crooked, evil, and greedy. We're filled with satanic dispositions. We barely resemble humans. We live in the image of Satan. <sighs> this really is the truth. Well, then tell me, if we believe and our sins are forgiven, yeah. why do we still sin and resist God? Why are we never able to practice the Lord's words or achieve repentance? Right. Why can't we genuinely repent? Right. Tell me why that is. Ha! Huh. Everyone sins. Who could explain that? Well, my aunt had an explanation. Oh? Ling. Yeah? Even though our sins are forgiven when we believe in the Lord, the satanic dispositions within us and our sinful natures remain. So we can still involuntarily resist God. It's just like chives in the ground. Hmm. No matter how many times you cut them down, they always grow back. Why? Because of the roots. Right. 
This is to say, the Lord did the work of redemption, oh. but not the work of completely purifying people. He expressed the way of repentance, which forgives our sins, but not the way of eternal life, which is what allows us to be purified. That means only belief in the Lord Jesus won't gain us everlasting life. Right. The Lord Jesus prophesied he would come again, and he told us, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. So when the Lord Jesus returns, he will guide us into all truth? Exactly. In the last days, he will say many things, oh. which will guide us into the entry of all truth. Mm. These truths are the way of eternal life that God grants to mankind. Think about it. If the Lord Jesus had already given man the way of eternal life, yeah. why would he prophesy that he would come again? Why would the Lord Jesus need to speak words that would guide us into the understanding of all truth? Hey, when you put it like that, I understand. Yeah? Only by receiving the return Lord can we gain the way of eternal life God grants to us. That's right! My aunt read me a passage of Almighty God's words, hmm. and I understood even more. Oh? Almighty God says, Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering and did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition. Fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to take on the sins of man as the sin offering, but also required God to do greater work to completely rid man of his disposition which has been corrupted by Satan. And so, after man was forgiven his sins, God has returned to flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. And this work has brought man into a higher realm. Almighty God's words are so clear. Exactly. Only after God comes incarnate twice, can we be completely saved from all sin? Today, Almighty God has expressed all truth required to purify mankind oh? and does the work of judgment in the last days. Only by accepting the judgment of God's words can we achieve fear and obedience of God and enter the kingdom of heaven gaining eternal life. Thanks be to God. What wonderful news. So, has your confusion turned to understanding? Ah, uh, yes it has. Hey, so you've accepted Almighty God? Almighty God is the returned Lord Jesus, so why wouldn't I accept him? <laughs> that makes sense. And I'll tell you what, hmm? the more I read from Almighty God, the brighter I feel. And that feeling is, how should I put it? Um, Are you going to sing or dance? Why not do both together? <laughs> now I've been changed by words of God, living a new life of loving God. I feel lost no more, my pains are all gone. I'm so free I can't help but sing. It feels so good to understand the truth. I cast away my... Uh, Stop singing. What's the matter? You understand the truth, but I still have a question. What's your question? Well, tell me. Huh? What truths has Almighty God expressed? Why do you say these truths are the way of eternal life? Almighty God has expressed millions of words. Oh? All of which are the truths mankind must possess to be purified and saved. There is so much to learn. Millions of words? Yeah. That's so much more than the Bible. So, 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 so much, much more. more. We're just emphasizing, emphasizing our point. point. Almighty God's words reveal the mystery of God's 6,000 year management plan. Oh? His three stages of work and the mystery of God's incarnation. Mm. God also reveals the essence and truth of mankind's corruption by Satan oh? and tells people how Satan corrupts mm. mankind, how God saves mankind, the endings for each kind of person, and so much more. Almighty God's words are all truths and mysteries we have never heard before. And also, also? genuine belief in God yeah. and what views people should have on belief, how to have a normal relationship with God, how to serve God in accordance with His will, what obedience and love of God is, how to be an honest person, how to change your disposition, how to discern the Holy Spirit's work from Satan's work, and so much more. Oh, wow. Do you know what this sounds like? What? Attending the wedding feast of the Lamb. Yep, that's right. When we accept Almighty God's work of the last days and read God's word, yeah. we are lifted up before the throne and attend the wedding feast of the Lamb. That's wonderful. Hey, why don't I read you a couple passages? All right. 
Almighty God says, In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, to expose the essence of man, and to dissect the words and deeds of man. These words comprise various truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out normal humanity, as well as the wisdom and the disposition of God, and so on. Hey, do you think I could read the next one? Yeah, okay. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God and the truth about his own rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God, of the purpose of God's work, and of the mysteries that are incomprehensible to him. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the roots of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment. For the substance of this work is actually the work of opening up the truth, the way, and the life of God to all those who have faith in Him. Amen. Almighty God's words put it so well. When we experience the judgment of Almighty God's words, we clearly see the true face of our own corruption by Satan. We come to know God's righteousness, which brings the fear of God in our hearts. Yes. We loathe and forsake ourselves and gain genuine repentance. Then our corrupt dispositions can be gradually changed. Thanks be to God. God's work is so practical. When the truth granted by God is gained into our lives, huh? our satanic dispositions are purified. That's right. And we no longer sin or resist God. Mm. And then we gain God's promises to mankind. Yes. Just as is prophesied in Revelation 21.4, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Do you understand now why I say the truth expressed by Almighty God is the way of eternal life? I understand now. It's the path to changing and purifying people. Of course it's the way of eternal life. That's right. Almighty God says, Christ of the last days brings life and brings the enduring and everlasting way of truth. This truth is the path through which man shall gain life, and the only path by which man shall know God and be approved by God. If you do not seek the way of life provided by Christ of the last days, then you shall never gain the approval of Jesus and shall never be qualified to enter the gate of the kingdom of heaven. For you are both a puppet and prisoner of history. <sighs> Hey, what's wrong? I've been living dangerously. Oh? I've been living in notions and imaginings and believed that simply by believing in the Lord Jesus I can enter the kingdom of heaven. I heard that Almighty God was doing the work of judgment in the last days, but I didn't look into it any further, and I nearly missed my chance to receive everlasting life. Right. I've been foolish and ignorant. You know, it's not too late. Hey, I finally understand. Understand what? That the Lord Jesus did the work of redemption. Yeah. And that he only gave us the way of repentance. Mm. We need to receive the returned Lord Jesus. Accept Almighty God's work of judgment, who is Christ of the last days. Right. Gain all truth expressed by God in the last days. Have our sinful natures purified, and only then mm. can we gain the way of eternal life. Right. That's what it really means to believe in the Son and gain everlasting life. Oh, yeah. Now she really does understand. Thanks be to God. I'm feeling a sudden urge to express myself right now. Want to dance again? No. Oh? I was thinking maybe a poem. Oh, first line. The Lord Jesus redeemed us and saved us from sin. Second line. Almighty God judges us to purify and perfect us. Closing. Believe in the Son, gain, gain everlasting, everlasting life. life.